welcome to I May Be Wrong. I don't know what this world is coming to. But I don't think so. We're broadcasting from the greater Nashville area. The home of country music. Beyond the borders of political correctness and identity politics. Facts and faith are our demarcations. Truth lights our path. Here's the Barry White of Podcast Radio. The venerable Alfonso Ashworth. Well, welcome to another exciting episode of I May Be Wrong, But I Don't Think So. Of course, this going this will be a trigger type episode. If you're easily triggered, I warn you that Stanley Levy is going to pull all the stops this morning. He is going to be uh, like no other. This is why I have Stanley come on. Stanley and I go way back to my days with Lion Chasers Radio, Lonnie Porndexter, in those days, and I got an opportunity to meet him in person, and he is a formidable statue of a man. Stanley is a, he can take care of himself, trust me, and he can take care of himself on the microphone. Before we get started, before we bring him on, because he's in the queue, uh, just do some quick housekeeping. Of course, you're listening to I May Be Wrong, But I Don't Think So. You can find the show every Wednesday at I may be wrong, but I don't think so dot com. Uh, typically, we have a call in guest. It's a 30 minute show. So it's bang, bang, bang. There's no lag. There's no waiting. There's no commercial breaks. There is not anything. We got right into the program. Now, if you would like to contribute to the show, you can do so from my website. You can become a subscriber. You can also help on the show. If you would like to support the show, you can uh, buy merchandise or whatever you'd like to do. We'd be greatly appreciated. Some people think that it's, that it's somewhat beneath this to ask for help. Look, we are up against Goliath. And when you are up against Goliath, you need all the help you can get. And my help and my strength cometh from the Lord, my faith, what I believe in, what I'm passionate about. And just like this brother is about to come on in just a few seconds, I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in what I'm saying. I believe that what we're doing at this time is something that's very important uh, with people like Stanley Levy, with black man thinking and others that are out there banging away at it, trying to get you to open your eyes and ears to the truth that you've been bamboozled. You've been tricked. You've been hoodwinked is what's happened to you. But we're trying to wake some of you up And we're doing so through this program and through other means. But, of course, Stanley Levy with Black Man Thinking is someone that I highly respect. I highly admire for what he does. He takes no prisoners. He's not going to be apologetic. He's not going to be trying to uh, soft pedal around the issue. So get prepared because Stanley is someone that one is on top of these issues. And he knows what's going on with these issues and he's going to bring it and he's going to bring it full frontal mayhem. So welcome to the show, Mr. Stanley Levy. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Al. How about yourself? Man, I tell you what, if it got any better, I'd have to slap myself and try to wake up out of this this dream that I'm having that I've got you on the show today once more. And we're going to chop it up and we're going to chop it up fast and quick. And we're going to get right into this. Tell people out there, one, how they can find you, how they find your show. And, of course, how can they connect with you? Oh, okay. Well, um, the show is Black Man Thinking. Uh, You can find it on Mojo Radio, uh, which is Mojo, M-O-J-O dot com. Uh, you can also, uh, I still, I still have my webpage. I, I, I still, I, I need to do more with it, but I also have a, a webpage, blackmanthinking.com. Um, there's no G and it's all one word, dot com. And, uh, when I can get back to blogging, I'll, I'll have more there, but you can, uh, you can hook up, you can, uh, find the show there as well. Um, and of course, I have my Facebook page, Black Man Thinking. Um, and I also, uh, I do occasionally tweet. I'm not a big, I'm not a big Twitter guy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Donald Trump. So I'm not a big Twitter <laughs> guy, but I do have, 
but I do have my Twitter page as well. So there, there are a lot of ways to get me. I'm also on um, uh, a couple of other stations, um, WLBB in Carrollton, Georgia, I believe is, uh, oh gosh, I cannot recall, uh, 106.3 FM. And I think, um, I think. Aren't you, aren't that, you in well, Florida? I can't remember the AM. Aren't you somewhere in Northern Florida? Oh uh, yeah. North yeah. Florida. Yeah. yeah. North Florida talk radio. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm, all I'm in place. a few places. So yeah. it's, it's, no, you, I'm not all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Place hey, brother, like you, sh- you should be, you should be, you should be at the top because I know that you bring it every time I hear you on your show because I, I listen to you religiously. And I'm not just saying that. I get on and I try to hear what you're talking about. And when I grow up, I want to be be, be just like you and Uncle Lonnie. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Brother, what's going well, on? Uh, what's going on with this impeachment? They're getting ready to have a well, quasi vote. Tell us what's happening. Give us the truth about it. Well, let's 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 go ahead and recap. This would if they hold this vote, this would be the fourth vote that there has been on impeachment since Donald Trump was inaugurated. Um, there were two votes held while the um, Republicans still had control of Congress, and both of those predictably went down in flame. Um, there was another vote that was held after um, the Democrats took control of the House majority, and the vote was 332 to 95 against. Okay. Let me say that again. 332 to 95 against impeachment while the Democrats under Nancy Pelosi held the majority in the House. So what does that tell you is that we've had three votes and so far we have yet to have a majority of Democrats in favor, voting in favor of impeachment. Now that may change. Um, it's a possibility that that could change. It's a possibility that they could uh, actually impeach Donald Trump. I don't, I don't take that out of the realm of, uh, realm of possibility. I take it out of the realm of importance. It doesn't matter. Um, in some ways, the cake is already baked. If Donald Trump loses the election, it, it'll probably mean he died um, <laughs> before right. November of next year. Um, or the voter fraud that the voter and election fraud that we saw in 2018 will become so rampant and blatant. It will be blatant. Oh, they're um, going to pull all the stops. That, oh yeah. Um, and for example, I, mean, I was just working on a project with AT and T, where um, in Los Angeles County they're they're looking to go deeper into technology to quote unquote secure the vote. And the problem with, with trying to secure the vote, there is no such thing as a secure voting uh, system that relies on technology. It's impossible. Right. And I say that as someone who happens to be a network engineer. It's like, are you trying, I mean, let's, let's, not, let's not forget something. Um, the banking system has suffered billions of losses, billions in losses worldwide. While banks spend, I don't know how much money on cybersecurity, and the simple thing is, they're not stealing money in chunks. They're stealing money in in penny increments. Exactly. And they're doing and they're doing it so effectively that the banks can't stop them, and they've lost billions of dollars in the last, in you know almost yearly. And so now you're going to tell me that the same technology that can't keep money in a bank is going to sit there and protect the vote. Well, sure, and, and that's, that's, that. that's the whole premise behind what the Democrats have been trying to set this up for is that Donald Trump stole the election. That's their whole premise well, is that he stole the, somehow no, stole actually, the election. It's, actually, actually, it's not their, their premise is not that he stole the election. Their premise is a little bit different. OK, their premise is that he doesn't represent the people. And that's the whole argument behind trying to uh, say, the, say that, see that he lost the popular vote. Um, that, and I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't lose the popular vote, but that's the whole issue behind the whole popular vote thing versus and then trying to um, tie everything back and get rid of the electoral college. So all of this is tied to a very larger um, demographic, very larger agenda. You're right. They are simply trying to take down constitutional 
governance in the United States. Wow. But for but for impeachment, the more the more immediate concern is this: they don't have another election strategy. I exactly. mean, look at it. They got a they have they have a they have a um, they have a nominating process that has twenty plus people in a clown car, <laughs> and the former front runner uh, Joe Biden can't even raise money right now. No, he can't compared even get a to dollar. say, um, yeah, compared to say, um, you know, Lila Wassa, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren, right, or you know, Bernie, you know, heart attack Bernie, right. So <laughs> this, and the thing is, neither nobody thinks that um, Warren or Sanders, one, can win, and that if they could find a way to win, that it would be anything positive for the United States. But these are their three front runners: a guy who can't raise money, an admitted socialist, and a lying, and a lying Indian. Right. Or, yeah. You know, let me ask you something, uh, Stanley. I, I've had a, a thought about this, and this is my, this is just me thinking that this election boils down the reason the Democrats have to throw everything in the kitchen sink is because of um, of the Supreme Court. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is not going to last much longer in, in person or out of body. I don't know. But what do you think? Is that one of their reasons that they're willing to do whatever it takes to stop Donald Trump? Uh, yeah, I say that. I, I, I think um, a lot of times, and this is, this is one of the things that I work against, there's always a narrative that, the, um, that is put out there primarily by the, by the media. Okay. And that narrative is usually off the mark. One thing that is huge but is not reported at least not reported very strongly and not as strongly as it would be had it, had it gone the opposite way the democrat party lost lost more than a thousand elected officers they switched from the democrat party to the republican party during the uh obama administration right during the at the beginning of the obama administration you had a 70 plus seat majority in the house you had a a, an 18 to 20 seat majority in the Senate. You had 28 Democrat governors and Democrats controlled 60 of the 99 state legislative chambers in the United States. Wow. By the time he left office, the majority in the house and Senate had switched. Exactly. By the time, by the time he left office, you had gone from 28 Democrat governors to less than 20. By the time he left office, you had gone from Democrats controlling 60 of the 99 state legislative chambers to Republicans controlling 67 of the 99 state legislative chambers. The issue is the Democrat Party is dying. They have no ideas for America and they, and at the, and when elections occur, people look at their policies and say they don't want them. And that's the problem. Yeah, that's that is in a nutshell. And regardless of what President Trump does or how he how well the economy is going, the media is always going to lean toward the Democrats and the old guards in the Democrat, the Bidens, the Clintons. But OK, but here's here's the thing. They're not leaning toward Democrat. They are leaning toward progressivism and, so, okay. and socialism. Who, the issue is that the Democrat Party, as currently constituted, is increasingly embracing both. Uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, that ridiculous bartending idiot. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if you gave her $500, she still couldn't afford to buy a clue. She is... This is a woman who cost this, the city of New York Amazon jobs. There were probably up to 25,000 jobs that Amazon was going to bring to New York City, and she went out there on a campaign to push them away, managed to do so, angering even other Democrats in New York, and she thinks that's something to celebrate. But this yet, is an but idiot. Yet, but yet, she has backed Bernie and people are are 
lining up to give Bernie money. I mean, Bernie's raising money like well, nobody else. We got we we got it. We got to put this in perspective. Bernie, Bernie Sanders will be president after my dead pit bull wins the election. Okay, <laughs> he's just there. Is there? I mean, I mean, you want to talk about somebody that has 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 no shot? Bernie Sanders cannot win a national election. The problem with Bernie is Bernie seems attractive the less you hear of him. Once you put Bernie Sanders on a debate stage, once you start asking him questions about how he intends to accomplish what it is that he wants to do, oh my gosh, I mean, it's worse. Than, it'll be worse than the, than the scene in The Wizard of Oz, you know, pay no attention to the man behind the screen. Exactly. There is nothing, there is, I mean, let's not, let's not forget who Bernie Sanders is. Bernie Sanders is a guy who didn't have a real job since he was 40 years old. Well, he has no, he, he, and, and, and remember, the only, the, you know, he took the payoff from, from, Hill, from the Clintons where they bought him, bought a, they him a house. They bought him a house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. House. So, you know, the, the man, he, he is a hypocrite, he's a sellout, and he's a socialist. Yeah, and you and put you all that together. You put all of that together with what else they have to offer. Maybe <laughs> Hillary gets back in. I don't know. Then you have Pete, Pete well, Buttigieg. Hillary, 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 Hillary is going. Hillary is going to show her. <clears throat> she's going. She's going. She's going to appear. Um, because you have to. I mean, once you understand who Hillary Clinton is, this is part of the problem with the American people today. They actually have been conditioned not to recognize who these people are. Hillary Clinton is flat out evil. She's anti-American. She hates America, and she's evil. Bernie Sanders is stupid. He doesn't know anything, right? And he had, and 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 his and his idea of how America should work has never worked anywhere in the world at any time. He still thinks he still thinks that Venezuela is not is not going under because of socialism. He thinks it's something else. Well, I don't Bless know what else. I don't know what else it could be other than the fact that, like, no, you just it, no that, that's the whole point. It isn't anything else. Right. But for him to acknowledge it means he has to distance himself from his own ideology and how's he going to do that well, and you know we that's and, the, and that's <clears throat> the point that the point you're making i think is is right on point is that the democrats have no other option but to try to impeach and remove a duly elected president for basically doing what other presidents have done as a tradition and as constitutional uh, talk to world leaders and find out what's going on if there's corruption happening. Let's 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 let let's move away from that. But back up to what you're saying. The Democrat Party is going after impeachment because the only the they have no other way to fight Donald Trump. Right. They can't do so legislatively. They can't pass. The problem is they can't pass anything that matters to the American people because Donald Trump has already made it clear. Hey, if you guys pass a law that I think is good for America, I'm going to sign it. Well, you so know, their issue is not their their issue is not Donald Trump. Their issue is can they get something out there that even gets past the Senate? Because if it gets past the House and the Senate, how many things has Donald Trump vetoed? Well, let's I mean, just be honest. Yeah, that's it. He's not, I mean, Donald, if it if it looks good for America, Donald Trump, Trump has is already determined and, are, and, are, and already shown that if he thinks it's good for America, he has no concerns about from whom it comes. Right. He doesn't exactly. care. Amen, brother. I mean, this this is this is the guy who sat there and listened to Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, come on, let's be honest. This is the, this is the guy who said, look, Kim Kardashian came in and made a case. And the next thing you know, he's signing, he's signing, um, you know, judicial reform. Yeah. He's signing legislation. Now, if anybody thinks that Kim Kardashian is a, is a reliable political operative, I got a deed to the Brooklyn bridge that you need to see. Amen, brother. But the issue but the issue wasn't who she was. The issue was whether or not the idea she brought was something that Donald Trump saw value in. He I did. Th I think you. I think you wrapped that up in a nice, neat little package. Hey, let's turn this to uh, Baghdadi, Mac Daddy, 
or whatever you want to call this so, this this this, this rapist murderer. What do you see? How is this being portrayed in our news versus how it was portrayed when uh, Barack Obama so-called took out uh, Osama bin Laden? Well, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Donald Trump didn't kill al-Baghdadi no no more than um, Obama killed Osama bin Laden. Um, Those directives would have originated with uh, George W. Bush, right? To and and as a result, the DOD undertook uh, its planning to lay out a way to a, a way to find and to kill or capture. Nobody really cares about capturing um, these these uh, in the, uh, Osama bin Laden first, um, and then other individuals who would have succeeded him or been at his level. This, I mean, if you want to give credit where credit is due. Nobody put that in, no president put that in motion before George W. Bush. Um, Barack Obama didn't, didn't, uh, go out there and order that someone go get Osama bin Laden. They brought, the DOD brought a plan to him and said, hey, we think we can get this guy. And he, this demonstrating a rare bit of common sense for an American president said, go get him. Um, Donald Trump did not issue an order. To go get about al Baghdadi. I mean, I'm sorry, that was already in the works. The issue was finding him. What well, do you and think once they handled, found him? Do you think he handled that presidentially, or do you believe that you know? I don't give a here, you know what here's the, and I, I get so tired. Of that. I don't give a rat's behind about <laughs> presidential handling. I give a, I get what I care about are presidential results. So every time I hear somebody, oh, he's not presidential. I say, excuse me, are you working? Come on, because because because, uh, you know, what I want the president to do is create an environment where the economy can can thrive, which basically means he takes the government out of the way of the American people. So are you are are you doing well? So if you're doing well, what difference does it make if he if if he spent if he spent his entire day on his Twitter account, which sometimes it seems he does, but you're doing well, why do you care? If he spends all day on his Twitter account and you as a business are less encumbered by government regulations and are able to not only make more money, but have more time to grow your business, then why do you care what he tweets? I don't give a rat's behind about presidential, about presidential behavior. I care about presidential result. And the way he handled it is the way I want a president to handle it. Did he get a result? Now, the the bigger question that that is um, not reported so much is, you know, they you you can find about four or five instances in the last six years where the media has reported Al Baghdadi has been has been killed. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> so here's the first question: Is he dead? Okay. Why 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 am I believe why am I believing this one? Well, I think they had his now, I'm underwear. Not saying, I'm not saying I'm not saying they didn't get somebody. Yeah. But the question is, who did they kill? Who who was it that got killed before? I I hear he and was so, I hear he the, was looking for his underwear. I think they got his underwear, and somebody said that um, maybe he was looking for his underwear and just got turned round wrong or something. But in any case, they said they 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 pretty sure they got him. They were pretty sure they got him every other time as well. Well, I guess if he I'm not, shows up again, no, don't 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 take this don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying they didn't get him. I'm saying that this has been a recurring news story that yes. this guy's been killed. I want to see video now. The question, uh, and what would that tell you? They well, had video. Well, I, you before. Know, I want to see video. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see the autopsy. I want to see everything that they let can me show tell, me. Let me tell. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what I want to see. The yeah. only thing that really matters which would be ISIS is no longer effective. There you go. Cut off the head. That's all I that, that's all that matters. That's it. If you if you've actually if you've actually cut off the head, then that organization is not going to be as effective as it once was. So And, and you know of course if they we're, actually we're getting, killed Yeah. If they actually killed him and he's actually no longer in the chain of command, then we should see those results in the um Attacks. Exactly. And if you and if you don't see those results, there's two things. One, 
did they kill him? And two, did it even matter? Right. I because let's, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest. They killed, I mean, they supposedly, and, and they, there's questions about that. They supposedly killed Osama bin Laden. So what? What did that stop? Well, it didn't stop, it didn't stop the fighting in Afghanistan. It didn't, stop, it didn't stop, it didn't even stop terrorist activity in that region or over here. It didn't stop anything. This is, see, this is my point. Um, even, even those of us who are not progressives, because we don't control what the media reports, we don't control that narrative, and we still are conditioned to respect the U.S. media, we get caught up in storylines that don't have anything to do with the price of rice. <laughs> the, issue, the issue is not whether or not al-Baghdadi is dead. The issue is whether or not ISIS continues to be effective in any way, shape, or form. That's what matters. Well, the issue was not whether or not Osama bin Laden was dead. Also, by the time they caught up with Osama bin Laden, by all accounts, he wasn't doing anything that mattered with respect to Al Qaeda or ISIS anyway. And that may be the that may be the million dollar question or the billion dollar question: Should we stay in the Middle East, do what we've been doing, or should we leave and let these people figure this out for themselves? And when we are. Well, let's- Let's, let's be clear about let's let's be clear about something. The, all this drama about pulling out of the pulling uh, our troops out of the, the Middle East. There are only twenty eight folks there, <laughs> not twenty eight hundred, not twenty eight thousand, two eight. It's about semantics. In other words, an, 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 enough people to fill an elementary school classroom. That's what we have <laughs> there. Because exactly. Donald Trump came out and made it clear we had. 50, and then he had to correct himself and say, you know, we only got, well, we got 28 folks there. Now, please explain to me what 28 people are going to do if the Kurds and the Turks break out in warfare against each other. You think, you, you think a thin red, white, and blue line of 28 people is going to make the difference? No, they're just going to, they're, they're just going to end up in flag draped coffins. Right. We didn't pull anything out that actually mattered. We just didn't. Well, it remains to be seen as to what's going to happen over there. Of course, the 2020 election is just going to come up. Are they going to have a vote? Apparently some kind of vote tomorrow about this impeachment inquiry. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I do know how the media is going to report it. Let's give you the the last minute. The bigger question is this. When are people like myself, like yourself and like the rest of America, going to stop paying attention to what doesn't matter there you go i mean and that's like i said like, okay yeah i mean we're, we're, caught, we're, caught up, we're caught up yeah we're, we're caught up worried about what nancy pelosi is going to do nancy pelosi doesn't even have control of her own caucus why do i care about what she has to do for the nation Bingo. she can't control uh she can't control the aoc coven that brood of witches she has no control no you 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 pretty much summed it up and, of course, I really appreciate you coming on again, Stanley. Uh, man, I tell you, every time you come on, I learn something new. I, I learn some facts that I hadn't heard before. And definitely from your perspective, it's black man thinking. Tell my audience where they can find you really quickly, quickly big guy. Okay. Um, black Man Thinking, you can find me on Facebook, my page, Black Man Thinking. You can find me on the radio, mojo.com, mojo.com. Uh, shows on Monday evenings at uh, 9, uh, oh, excuse me, 10 Eastern and 7 o'clock uh, Pacific. Uh, you can also find me on North Florida Talk Radio 107.5. Um, you can also find me on WLBB in Carrollton, Georgia. Um, I'm also on Twitter. and uh, My uh, my website is blackmanthinking.com. No there you, G. There you go, man. But it was great being with you, man. I appreciate it, brother. God bless you. And, of course, we'll talk talk again soon. Okay. Take care, Al. Of course, that was Stanley Levy with Black Man Thinking. Uh, he, it's always a pleasure because Stanley has his own way of getting to the facts. As you just heard, he's got his own way of putting things that makes things more clear. 
And what we're saying is the media has got the shiny red objects out there, the shiny blue objects, and it's controlling the narrative. And we have to be more proactive. One, I want to thank you for listening in today. We had a great show. I really i am glad that Stanley was able to come on again. And I thank you for helping us out on this show. If you're a listener, please come back again. Of course, as always, God bless you. God bless America and peace. You've been listening to Alfonso Ashworth, the Barry White of Podcast Radio. Go forth and share his message. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. Remember, no two people can ever occupy the same place at the same time. You were uniquely and wonderfully made. Born an original. Don't die a copy. God bless. Peace. Peace.